Hey, everybody, it's anaglyph time. And I know you're like, oh, my God, he's wearing rubber glasses. That is so 1950s. Actually, it goes back to the 1800s. And just so you know, 3D movies 1950s were not wearing red-blue glasses. They were using polarized glasses, the same type of polarized glass as well. Not as fancy as the ones you today, but the basic same technology. Red-blue movies were done in the 70s as a throwback because it was cheaper. But I'm not here to talk to you about that today. What I'm here to talk to you about is anaglyph drawing, how to do 3D drawings. I really enjoy this. It's not very complicated to do, but I want to go through step-by-step step the different ways that you can take a layered drawing and turn it into red blue with depth. Actually, they're red cyan. These are the fancy red cyan glasses. Red cyan is better than red blue. Also, by the way, red over the left eye. That is tradition. Now, where do we get started? Well, I'm gonna make a print project. So think to yourself, what are you gonna make? So I'm gonna show you a brand new file. Yay, new file. And I'm gonna go uh, eight by 10 and 81, eight by 10. 300 dots per inch, so this would be a nice print, and I'm going to use a nice white background. So there it is. So an 8 by 10 with a white background. Beautiful. Now, this is going to be a layered Photoshop document. Let me fit the screen. So I'm going to save it right off the bat. I'm going to do um, Save As, and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document. I'm going to call it Anaglyph Demo. As you see, I've recently done an Anaglyph Demo, and this is another Anaglyph Demo. Now, at the end of the day, all you have to do is create a layered document, and that layer being that there are going to be at least three layers, you know, near, mid, far, but you get as many layers as you want. And you want to design it as a line drawing. So we're not thinking about fills. We're not thinking about painting. We're not thinking about, like, dense shapes. We're thinking about lines. We're also thinking monochromatically. This is a monochromatic drawing. Now, we need to be in RGB mode because, obviously, we need to make things red cyan. But I want you to be thinking about this as a black or a grayscale line drawing. Let me come over here to layers. There we go. And I'm going to give myself one, two, three layers, right? There it is, three layers. And I'm going to name my layers because I'm always good and I name my layers. And my layers are going to give me some room here, folks. There we go. My layers are going to be named uh, near and then mid, and then far. And you can, I mean, obviously I would name them something more responsible later on, but I'm gonna come over here and I am going to draw. Oh, it's a nice, crazy, thick line. I don't want a line that big. Uh, there we go, something nice and small. Now, one of the things that's fun about doing this project is that if you're going to do an anaglyph drawing, you wanna be thinking about all the things that make it 3D before you make it 3D. You want to think about perspective and size and shape and overlap and all the things that you do to fool the eye into depth. And then we're going to, boom, make it depth. That's why this is going to work. I also like to play with line weight and uh, line value, but I'm not going to worry about that just now because this, wor this works regardless. So I'm going to come over here and for far away, I'm going to draw the circle. Yay. And then midway through, I'm going to draw a square and then near I'm going to draw a triangle and you notice by the way that it has some of the features already right you've got size you've got location so the idea being is, is you could almost sit there going yeah I can see that the triangle is in front of the square in front of the circle but there you go now because they're on separate layers I can have some fun with this at any moment I could grab the, the tool and I can go I'm going to move this one here this one here and this one here and that's going to be nice is that we can keep doing this the trick is, is I need to make them red cyan. Well, what do I mean by that? I need to make it so that when the red cyan are separated in this direction, my eyes fuse, and it'll pop in front of the screen. And when the red cyan is fusing this direction, it'll be behind the screen. And so the idea is how much separation is there going to be? So that means that every single layer is going to have its own level of red cyan separation. So that means every layer is going to turn into two layers. I'm dealing with three layers, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter. But at some point, each one of those layers will have to turn into two layers. Let's start off with our far layer. I'm going to turn off the near layers, right? So I've got my far layer, but I need two copies of that layer. Obviously, right now it's only one. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. Yay, great far copy, and I'm gonna call it far red. And then I'm gonna rename the other one. Where is rename? It's around here somewhere. I'm gonna rename it. Oh, it's up there somewhere, there we go. I'm gonna rename it, 
uh, red, far cyan. Now, there are about a dozen ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you three different ways in which you can take the red and cyan, which are both currently black, and turn them into red and cyan. And you get to decide which way you like best. And by the way, you can automate these if you like to work with Photoshop Actions. I'm just gonna show you three different ways and let you decide what you like best. So first things first, I can colorize. Image, adjustment, hue saturation. And I could press the colorize button. Now when I do that, it's gonna be all messed up. You're gonna wait a second, that's not right. And instead of, uh, you don't see it all. Let me, let me come over here and you say, wait a second, that's not right at all. And the reason is, is because the lightness is at a zero. So I'm gonna set the lightness to 50 and you're gonna go, oh, I see where he's going. Now I'm gonna make saturation all the way to 100. And then of course the hue is red, which is zero. So now I've turned this into a red. Zero, 100, 50 will turn this into red. If I come back over here, turn the layer off and go to cyan and I colorize it, I will then go 180, which is the blue, 100, fully saturated, and again, 50, and that's cyan. And there you go. Now, the red is on top of the cyan. That doesn't work very well. Well, that's really easy. All you have to do is change it from normal to multiply. And once you've done that, now they are on top of each other. I click over here. I'm going to click over here. And now I can separate it by moving it a little bit this way. Now, the fun part is, is I put the glasses on. If I move the red to the right, then it goes into the screen. If I move the red to the left, then it comes out of the screen. And by the way, I could move the cyan to the left if you want, but red to the right goes in, red to the left comes out. Now, when it comes to designing this, there's only so much depth you can put on a page at the same time. You only so much depth you can put on the screen at the same time. You go very little outward, you can go a lot deeper than you can outward. Just something you should know. So let me come back over here. Let me move the red back. Since I said I wanted this to be the far away one. And there it is. It's deep into the screen. Beautiful. Now, the fun part is, is if I grab both of these layers, I can actually pick them up and I can move them around. And because the separation is the same, they will be that level of depth. Never move the layers up and down from each other. You can move them together up and down, but no separation up and down will do you any good. This is about moving your eyes, so it's always about left and right. Once I've done that, I can come over here and layer new group from layers, and I can call this far group. Beautiful. There's my group. Hide it. Done. Voila. Next. Let's do it again. But I'm going to do it a different way this time with my mid layer. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to call this mid and again, start with the red, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make this mid cyan. Now, technically, one of the layers will be at the screen level, and whatever layer that is, you don't actually have to do anything to it because it'll just be monochromatic, it'll be black and white. So that layer, you can do this, but I'm not gonna do one of those layers because obviously I have to leave it alone. So how am gonna do this again? Well, instead of using hue saturation to colorize it, I'm going to use levels. For some reason, this is the one I like best. It's what I'm used to doing. Control L for levels. I'm gonna to go to the red level and I'm gonna take my output levels all the way down. And there it is, it's red. Let me turn that one off, go to the cyan. Levels again. And I take the green output level all the way down and I take the blue output level and I take it all the way down. And like that, it's done. Again, change this to multiply. Matter of fact, because I've got other items on the screen, your best bet is to change all of them to multiply when the time comes. All right, go back over here to the mid red. And remember what I said is if you move it to the right, it will go backwards on the screen. And in fact, it does. And if I want to really see what else I've got, I can put the other one up and ooh, look at that. I can actually see that one's further than that one. And I can come over here and grab both of these layers. Now I'm looking goofy with them on. And I can come over here and I can do that. And I can have some fun with these layers. And I can literally see which one is on top of which. Mm -hmm. Now, what would have been interesting would be is if I had to change the value of these, which I didn't do right now, but I could have changed the value as well. We can do that later on if we want to. But now I've got one, two, and both of these are behind the screen. So I've got the screen, and then I've got this, and I've got this. And again, you've seen already that I've got two different ways in which I can do this. 
let's do what you did before and clean it up, new uh, group from layers, and this would be uh, mid group. Beautiful. And there it is. Now, before I do the near group, um, I'm actually going to turn the near group on and just remind you that if I would have put the near group over here, because it, it's at the surface level, I already have one, two, three. I'm done. Matter of fact, I can just leave that layer alone and go, okay, maybe I will add another layer. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that one as is. Because again, if it's just black, it's at the surface. So now I want someone who's going to pop out again. So I'm going to add one more layer, and that's going to be uh, very near. Or pop out. There we go. Pop out. What am I going to draw on that layer? Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw something. Uh, there we go. Something weird and squiggly. There we go. That's, all right. That's great. It's not, but there it is. So I'm going to put that over there. There you go. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. And uh, this one is going to be pop out red. And this one is going to be pop out cyan. Now, there's one last way that I can do this. And uh, I can come over here. And for the pop out red, I am going to come over here. And I'm going to do the color overlay. And for color overlay, I'm going to set my opacity to 100 and my color to red, which is 0, 100, 0. Q, sat Q red, saturation 100, brightness 100. Beautiful. And because this is an overlay, and because it's, it's, a, um, it's a layer style, I'm going to rasterize that layer style just so it's baked on. Now I can go to my pop-out cyan, and I can double-click on the pop-out. I can double-click to bring up the layer style menu. I can do a color overlay, but instead of this, instead of hue of zero, I'll go hue of 180, I'll look, it's cyan, and then also I'm going to bake it by rasterizing the layer style. Then I'm going to make this one a multiply like I did before. How about red? I'm going to do a multiply like I did before. And remembering red to the right goes backwards, red to the left comes forwards. I can come over here like this, and now I've got one, two, three, and it is just beautiful, especially with my cursor out of the way. I can grab those two layers together and I can move them wherever I want. And I can create a real exaggerated sense over here. Where I've got, oh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to break the window. Never break the window. But I can come over here like that, and I've got this beautiful one, two, three thing going on over here. And it's phenomenal in 3D right now. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I've created four layers. Then I come over here, layer, new group from layers. And this would be a very near group. And, and I'm done. I could I could do other things if I wanted to, uh, but this is the basic way of separation. Now, what other things could I do here? Um, I, I could just keep adding more layers. I could bake the whole thing. I could adjust the, the the width between the two. And I more importantly, I can just come over here and start asking myself, which layers am I looking at? It's so weird. Oh, I, I was doing individual layers, which I don't want to do. Now I want to auto select groups. So now I can work on the groups together, which is very important. So when I do this, I can do this like this. So I can sort of separate everything and have this really weird abstract, nothing is touching, or I can really come over here and do like this. Now you're like, why can't you fill the spaces? If you fill the spaces, weird things happen. And that's why we don't fill the spaces. It's a whole different art form. This is just a good way of getting started. And you can have fun. You can play any way you want, but this is just the way I like to get started when teaching how to create anaglyph drawings. Again, I could have varied the, the line weight, I could have varied the line value, and I could have done other cool things along the way, but that's it. Save the project, flatten it, print it, get some glasses, you're good to go. My name's Jared, I hope you enjoyed this. And yes, there are many other ways that you can make red and cyan separations. I just showed you three different ones, whatever one you like, that's one you should do, enjoy.